What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architects. So in the last video, I showed you how you can create some CG debris as if a helicopter or other sort of aircraft is landing in your scene. However, I wanted to make a follow-up video to show how you can create some dynamic grass in a similar situation as if it's being blown around in the scene. Now I made a video about a year ago on how you could create some dynamic grass blowing around in the wind, but it's a little bit different than the effect of a helicopter landing and blowing around grass based on the proximity of the object blowing the grass around. So in this specific video, I'm going to show how you can create this effect and to start off this tutorial I'm just going to start off with a reference here so I've just typed in Google here helicopter landing in grass and we can find a reference for our image and we're looking to create something like this so you can see our helicopter is landing in the grass here and it's just kind of creating this turbulent pattern away from our helicopter here blowing the grass outward here's another nice reference here and you can just kind of see the distribution of force it's just blowing the grass directly away from the helicopter here and this is probably a pretty good one to look at you can also look up videos of helicopters uh, landing in fields and a lot of the time in big movies when they're having some kind of craft land on the ground they'll actually use a helicopter to recreate the dust and other you know elements that would be blowing around as if something's in the scene and then they'll replace that helicopter with the original CG object that they want so you can see they sort of create that environmental interaction with the live action shot so they don't have to add as much later and they have some reference on uh, what elements they do want to add into the scene but uh, without further ado let's get started in the tutorial so this is the effect we're going to create here you can see the grass blowing around based on the proximity it is from the helicopter and we're just using a few different force fields to create this effect and a turbulence field as well and you can see how the grass is being blown around based on the proximity from the helicopter and we can control how violent it's being blown around as well which is exactly what we want for this effect so we'll be able to control the amount it's being blown around how violently it's moving and uh, the turbulence as well so anyways guys this is going to be the effect we're going to create and as a starting point for this tutorial i'm going to start off with just the helicopter animated and no other effects added to this scene so i'll go ahead and open up that project file and we can start from there all right guys, so this will be our starting point here, just our animated helicopter as if it's landing. The first thing we're going to do is create a ground plane for our grass particle system to be instanced on. So I'll go ahead and press shift A, I'll add a mesh plane and I'll just scale this up here and place it where our helicopter lands. Ideally, our helicopter would be landing on our grid, but um, it's just, we've animated it here. So it's a little bit above our grid. So for the sake of simplicity, I'll just create this plane right where our helicopter lands. So we'll try something like this and I'll press command A and apply all transforms. And now we want to add a grass particle system to this plane here. So I'll go ahead and rename it first. I'll call it ground plane. And now we'll go to our particle properties tab and I will add a particle system and we'll switch the particle type to hair. And I do want to check the advanced checkbox so we have a little bit more control over this particle system. And at this point we can tell how many particles we want to instance on this plane. So I might just do 500 for now. So they're a little bit less to work with at first. And then we can crank this number up if we want more grass in the future. And now we'll scroll down here. If you want a little bit more advanced effect, you can choose the hair dynamics option, but I'm gonna try to keep it simple for this tutorial and just use this hair particle system in a more basic way. All right, so now that we have created our hair particle system, let's go ahead and instance some grass on this hair particle system. I'm going to be using the Nasarga Light Nature add-on. It's a really useful nature add-on that includes a variety of different assets to choose from. And we do have a nature add-on value bundle that includes our Spiderfy add-on, as well as this Nasarga Light add-on. So I'll put a link to that in the description below in case you're interested in that deal. But of course you can use any 3D nature assets of your choice. I'm just going to keep it simple here. I'll choose a few different grass assets here from Nasarga. Maybe I'll choose this elephant grass and I do want to make sure it's editable and I'll go ahead and spawn this asset into our scene and I'll just place this over here and then I'll maybe just go to flowers and I'll add this flower asset as well. Add this one in, Let's scale it up, put it off to the side here. And I'll do one more here. I'll just maybe do one of these smaller ones. I'll use this one right here. Spawn this asset in here. It's gonna spawn wherever your 3D cursor is. So you can just move them to their own little spot here. And I'll just select all three of our nature assets from Nasarga and I'll press M and then I'll add them to a new collection. We'll call it nature instances. Okay. 
And now we can select our particle system once again. I'll scroll down here to our render option. And instead of rendering our hair particle system as a path, I'll render them as a collection. And then I'll select the nature instances collection that we have created. And now you can see we have instance our nature assets where those hair particles would be. However, we are having an orientation issue. And sometimes this happens depending on the orientation of your assets, but it's a fairly quick fix here. All you have to do is just select each nature asset here. And then under object properties, under relations, we'll change the tracking access to plus C. And now you can see that aligns our nature asset more appropriately to our particle system. So we'll just do that to each of our particles here. Select this one, tracking access plus C, and then I'll do the same thing here. And now you can see our nature assets are appropriately oriented in our scene. And with these default particle settings, you'll notice that by scaling your instances in your scene, you can actually scale how they're instanced on the particle system as well. So feel free to play around with that. One thing I want to do for this grass system is just create a little bit more random variation. So I will select the particle system, go to the particle system settings here, and under render, I'll increase the scale randomness to one. So we're as random as possible here. And then we can also just increase the general scale as well, just to make them a little bit bigger on our particle system. All right, so now that we have our nature assets instance on our particle system, system, let's add some force fields to make it feel like the helicopter is affecting this field here. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. And the first thing we're going to add is just a very basic force field. So I'll go ahead and add this force field here. And right off the bat, you can see it's actually affecting our grass particle system. And now what we can do is we can go to our physics properties tab with this force field selected, and then we can actually increase the strength of this force field. So now you can see where this is going. We're actually getting the appropriate effect as our grass particles are being pushed away from our force field here. So now what we can do is we can actually move this force field by our helicopter just directly below where our helicopter base is. And then we can parent this force field to the helicopter itself. So I'll go ahead and select our force field and then I will shift and click our helicopter control here and then press control P and parent our force field to our helicopter. So now you can see as our helicopter moves, our force field is moving with it. All right, so this is a nice start, but we want these hair particles to move around a little bit more violently and randomly. So one thing we want to do is actually add a modifier to our strength setting of our force field. So I'll go ahead and increase our strength a little bit till I get the right angle of the grass particles that I want. So maybe something like 8.2. And as my cursor is over the strength here, I'll press I to add a keyframe there. And now what I want to do is while our force field is selected, I'll go to our graph editor here. And I wanna to go to modifiers, and then I want to add a noise modifier. And now you can see we've actually added some noise on the strength property of our force field. And I wanna make it pretty subtle here just so the strength varies over the course of our timeline. So we can actually change the scale and the strength of this noise to vary how this looks. I think probably we want our scale pretty large so it doesn't go too crazy initially, maybe something like 10. And then we can also play around with the strength a little bit so there's some variation. And now let's go ahead and go back to our 3D viewport. And now you can see we're getting a little bit of variation in our grass particle system. All right, so this is a nice touch, but we want it to be a little bit more violent. And we could adjust the noise modifier on our strength setting to make them move a little bit more violently. But another thing you can do to create that more violent effect is just increase the noise amount right here. So if we go ahead and increase this to say six, you can see that fairly quickly we've added some noise to our force field that's affecting our grass particle system. So this is actually looking pretty good. I don't wanna overdo the noise too much. So I might bring this down to maybe somewhere around three. And I think that's looking pretty good, but feel free to adjust it to your taste. Now, one thing I'm not liking in this specific case is how far our force field is working. So what we can actually do to dial back the intensity in these distant grass particles is actually enable the maximum distance for our force field. So if we go ahead and select this, now we can slowly increase this max distance to control just how wide we want this force field to affect. So I'm gonna go with something maybe like 23. And we can also change the fall off of this force field after this max distance. So by increasing this number, you'll notice that our grass particles are affected less based on the distance they are from the force field. So I might make this power around 0.2 just for a very subtle fall off. And now we have a system that affects our grass particles based on the distance they are from our force field, which is attached to our helicopter. So this is looking pretty cool. I might increase the strength of our force field a little bit more. So maybe make this around 12. All right, so this effect is looking pretty cool here, but one thing 
you'll notice is that all of our random variation is directly away from our force field. So what we can actually do is we can add a turbulence field in addition to our force field in order to create some more random and violent movement of our grass particle system. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. I'll add another force field, except we'll use a turbulence field this time. And now I will select this force field and shift and select our helicopter control as well. Press control P and parent this turbulence field to our helicopter as well. And now I can select our turbulence force field again. And just by increasing the strength slightly, and you can see if I just move this turbulence field, that it's just adding some random movement to our particle system based on a simple noise pattern that is constant throughout our 3D world. So we can apply some similar techniques to this turbulence field as we did with the force field attached to our helicopter. The first thing we can adjust is our strength setting, which is going to control the amount of force on this turbulence field. But another thing we want to do is actually increase the noise amount as well to create that fast pulsing violent effect. So I will increase the strength on our turbulence force field to around eight. And I'll also crank up our noise amount a bit as well to create more small scale random variation. So I'm at 3.9 right now. It's a bit too much here. My dial this back a little bit, maybe noise amount at one. And then I might bring down our strength to say five. And one more thing we want to adjust on our turbulence force field as well is our maximum distance setting as well as our power fall off. So I'll go ahead and select our maximum distance and then I'll just slowly increase this to probably I want this max distance to go a little bit further than our initial force field that we've added. So I'll just bring this up and I'll just visually you can see how far our force field is affecting here. And I'll just bring this to just past our initial force field. So somewhere around 27 should be pretty good. And then I'll make Make the power around 0.1 so it just falls off slightly and already we have a pretty nice looking effect here if we want our grass to be a little more violent we can crank up the strength of our turbulence a tiny bit here at this point it kind of depends on your personal taste but i think this is looking pretty good so at this point, if we wanna have a little bit more fun, we can of course add a white painted particle system on our grassy field here to add some variation in the density of it. So I'll go ahead and select our ground plane here. I'll go to our object data properties, add a new vertex group, we'll call it density. And I'll go into edit mode really quick and we will subdivide our plane a few times. Like so. And now I'll switch to weight paint mode and we can paint where we want these grass particles to be. So I'll just create some patches of grass to add some more variation in our grassy field here, but feel free to play around with this as you like. Now I'll switch back to object mode. Now I'll select our particle system, go to our particle settings tab, scroll down here to our vertex group. And for density, we will select the density vertex group that we have weight painted. And now you can see we have a more custom density for our grass particle system. And what we can do is we can crank up the number of our grass particles to say something like 2000, if we want a little bit more of a grassy field. And now you can see we have a pretty nice looking dynamic grass effect on our particle system that is based on the proximity from our helicopter. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Hope it was helpful. Feel free to play around with these settings to get a more or less intense effect based on the desired results for your scene. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content, and I'll see you next time.